G'day everyone! So in my last video you saw how I laid the carpet in the passenger area of my Toyota Coaster. Now that that's done I've just got a few other bits and pieces that I want to do to finish off the driver's cab area and then I can get started on building the house part. So I put a little bit more carpet in this front passenger area here. All of this area here is going to be built up with storage and things. Um, but this little section here is actually under the passenger seat and you will be able to see a little bit of the floor. I'll have some storage under there as well. But this bit of the floor will actually be visible. So I decided to put some more carpet in there. And I ended up using the piece that came that was meant for the top of the engine hatch because I'm probably going to get someone to make me a proper molded cover that actually not only covers the top of the engine hatch but also comes down the sides similar to the original one that was there that I had to get rid of so I wasn't going to be using that piece for that and it was just the right size to fit in this little section here so I've put some carpet uh, on this bit of the step here and then this section here as well. This bit that I've cut out is actually where the leg of the passenger seat goes and you'll see where I when I put the passenger seat back in how that will all fit together but I'm pretty happy with how I did this section it's reasonably neat you won't actually see any of this here because um, I have this cover that goes back over all the electrical stuff that will kind of sit in there like that and then the passenger seat will go on top of all of that so a lot of it you won't see unless you get down and look really closely um, I'm going to probably put a little piece of trim along here just to neaten up that edge uh, but yeah I'm pretty happy with that so the next job that I want to do in this cab area is to put some new uh, lining on the wall here. Now I did keep the original panels that were on there but as you can see they're just this kind of Bernie board stuff. There's a lot of, like this one's pretty badly torn, a lot of water damage from when there was a leak there. So I'll use these as templates. But what I'm thinking of doing is just cutting it out of 3mm ply, so same as the what I used on the other walls in the living space, because it's about the same thickness as these original panels, and I may even be able to use the same trim clips just to um, secure it in there without having to glue or screw it on. Hopefully that will work. So what I'm going to do is use these templates that I've got from the original panels, um, trace that out onto the ply. The original panels came in two halves. I'm not sure if there was a reason for that. I'm going to see if I can just do it as one single sheet of ply. Uh, but if not, I may have to do it in two separate pieces. Anyway, I'm going to trace it onto the ply and hopefully get it to fit nicely in there. pretty well. I'm happy with the actual shape of the ply and how it fits um, over the top of the carpet and around the windows and so on. And most of the holes line up so pretty much all of the holes on this um, half of the ply match up nicely. Um, and there's a couple here that do as well but the ones on the end here are just a little bit off. I think that's just because when I tried to join the two pieces together to make one piece, I probably didn't have them aligned exactly how they were aligned when they were originally in the bus. The other thing I'm not entirely happy with and I've decided to change how I'm going to do it is, as you can see, the original panels that I took the template off didn't come all the way up 
the wall um, because there was another kind of padded armrest kind of panel here in the bus originally which I got rid of because it was all torn and falling apart um, and I didn't want to put it back in so I was thinking when I cut this originally that I was going to put like one of my timber battens along here in case I wanted to screw things in for the dog platform and some storage that I want to build in here but I'm thinking now just because there are no holes for the trim clips in this top half of the panel um, they all seem to be on the bottom it might be easier if I did the ply up another 40 millimeters higher so that it came pretty much to the top of this frame here and then I could put some trim or something over the top of it and actually screw through the plot screw the trim piece uh, through the ply into the frame and then that would help secure the ply as well I don't really want to glue this section just in case you know I need to take it off for some reason like there's also I guess more chance of water damage to this panel because of the windscreen washer thing and everything under the dash um, if the windscreen leaks again anyway I just don't really want to glue this piece to the frame I'd like to be able to remove it if possible I'm gonna recut this piece I'm gonna use this piece as the template because I'm really happy with where the majority of the holes are matching up I'm gonna make the new piece 40 millimeters higher all the way along um, and I'm just gonna slightly adjust the position of these holes in the new piece and hopefully that will fit better we'll see <laughs> okay I'm much happier with this second attempt so you can see it's quite a bit higher than the first one it basically goes all the way up to um, the top of the where the windowsill starts here um, and all of the holes that I drilled for the trim clips line up pretty well they all fit which is great <laughs> so yeah I'm pretty happy with that so now I'm going to give it a coat of paint, probably a grey of some sort to try and blend it in with the rest of the cab area. And once that's done, I can put it in, pop the cover over the electrical stuff there and put the seat back in. So yeah, getting there, starting to look pretty good. So for the undercoat, I'm using this Dulux Precision. It's a stain and mold blocker and I'm actually going to be using this as my undercoat for all the parts of the bus that I'm going to be painting. So for the top coat I've just got a little sample pot here and this is the colour that it's meant to be. So it's Dulux Grey Cabin and I chose that colour because it was the closest I could get to the colour of the trim clips that will be attaching it to the wall. So hopefully it'll look alright and match in okay with the rest of that area. We'll find out. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'm going to start cleaning up some of the other bits and pieces that I removed from the cab area about a year ago. They've been sitting in the shed this whole time and as you can see they're pretty filthy. Uh, looks like there might even be some mold starting to grow on them. This is the inside panel of the driver's door, so it look, it's looking pretty manky. It should be a nice grey similar to the piece that's sitting on top of it. This is the cover that goes over the handbrake and this piece here um, I'd forgotten I even had I think this might actually be a cover that goes over the base of the gear stick so I'm going to clean that up as well and see if I can fit that back on. So I've also now put the panel back on the inside of the driver's door. You can see how much cleaner it is now compared to how it was and I basically just used some hot soapy water to clean it and uh, I've put this piece back on so if you remember from my last video I had a lot of problems when I was fitting the carpet in this area trying to get it to fit over that until I decided just to eliminate that altogether and put the carpet up around it so it's lucky that I still had this piece because now I can just put that back over the top and it just kind of finishes off that gear stick nicely 
um, sits over the top of the edges of my carpet there so yeah I'm pretty happy to have, have found that I'd forgotten I even had that piece now that I've put in new carpet and um, everything the dash is looking really old and worn uh, if I come up closer you'll see it's got a lot of marks on it um, a lot of scratches especially underneath here it looks pretty grotty now in comparison to the nice new carpet and the covers there but I'm not going to worry about it at this stage. Down the track, I may do a full dash renovation and actually pull it all apart again and paint it and get it looking really nice. But, you know, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I just want to crack on and get the house part of the bus finished. So once my paint has dried, I'll be able to put this ply piece back in the wall here, pop the cover on and the passenger seat, and then this section will be finished. Well, this is what it looks like after the paint has dried. I painted both sides of the ply with two coats of the undercoat, and then on this side I've also painted two coats of the top coat grey colour. So it's looking pretty good. Let's see what it looks like when I put it back in the bus. This is how it all looks. Passenger seats back in and that's the ply wall there. I ended up just screwing it in directly to the frame with these little screws. I mean I'm not too concerned that you can see them. I don't think they look too terrible. I can always put a little bit of trim over that one day if I want to, but honestly, I'm not really worried about it. I'm happy with how that looks, and at least it's covered up all the insulation in the wall. Um, yeah, so I'm still going to get an engine cover made at some stage, and I'm also going to be re-upholstering the seats here because um, this, the seat covers that are on are, are quite dirty and old. So I'll be getting new seat covers for both of those seats at some stage. So that's as much as I'm going to do in the cab area for now. And with that done, it means I am finally ready to start building interior walls and furniture in this bus. So I'm looking forward to getting started on that. Stay tuned. <laughs> 